Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. This video is all about how to get an A in physics at AS level. Physical quantities and units, measurement techniques, kinematics, dynamics, forces, density, pressure, work, energy, power, deformation of solids, waves, superposition, electric fields, current of electricity, DC circuits, particle nuclear, physics. That's all in AS man. That's not a lot, is it? So getting an A in physics is pretty easy, that's what I think if if you really like the subject, if you really like. Physics is one of the most interesting subjects I take. It has always new discoveries and theories which you have never even thought about. It's actually more interesting than maths because in maths you cannot question what's going on. You cannot question the calculations. But in physics you can question every single thing. So if you actually develop that interest of questioning your teacher, questioning just general physics, and going on the internet to know more things about the same topics, it will definitely help you a lot. So as you might know that at AS level physics there are three papers. The first one is the multiple choice, second one is the structured and the third one is the practical. The structured questions carry the maximum marks so you need to hammer that paper like really well. That's, that's the only paper you need to concentrate the most over because practical is pretty pretty easy. So firstly, let's talk about paper one. Paper one is the multiple choice and you should practice for paper one once you're ready for paper two. Yes, paper two is the structured questions and it's actually the most demanding paper. So you need to start preparing yourself for paper two and you'll eventually come across a time when you'll think that you're already ready for paper one because paper one I, I know that paper one has a lot of small small details but those details can be easily covered if you prepare for paper two very nicely paper three is a own story on its own so just leave it apart for paper one and paper two the preparation techniques should be pretty much the same until you reach a stage that stage would be once you get about 70 or 80 percent in your practice of paper two yeah once you get a start getting a 70 or 80 percent in paper two now you can start doing past papers for paper one so once you start the past papers for paper one you'll actually realize that those are pretty different than paper two however you can implement the same knowledge from paper two in paper one also okay what i'm saying doesn't really mean that uh, once you're ready for paper two means that you're also ready for paper one they both are pretty different but i'm just saying that the way you prepare for paper two will help you to give you a backbone for paper one also for paper one the answers are right in front of you but the problem is that there are four answers now which one to choose even if you find a fake answer those guys are very smart to put the fake answer also in those four choices as you know that like talking about momentum let's say when a ball rebounces from a wall the momentum becomes negative because momentum is a vector and not a scalar now you just find the same answer but you take the positive momentum on the other hand the answer is a negative momentum so that's the small small details which you need to actually practice for paper one for paper two i would like to say that just do past papers as many past papers that you can start with tropical papers and then go to past papers but just do past papers there's nothing in this textbook which is going to help you answer most of those questions because the cambridge uh, the markers the people who mark your papers want some of some of the answers in a particular format like they want the same words to be used as in the mark scheme and sometimes these books don't even use those words which are used in the mark scheme so it's better to start by topical papers like you do topic wise i'll put down the links for in the description below you can find some topical papers there and um, once you're done with all the topical papers, that's when you can start attacking the original past papers. Now the past papers before 2015 and 2014 were, I thought were a bit easier, but you should expect questions like from past papers of 2016 and 2017, because these are, I think, hot, higher order thinking skill questions. 
and managing your time while writing the paper too is very very important because paper 2 is a pretty long paper it's pretty lengthy paper to be finished in 1 or 15 minutes so make sure that in, in your practice of past papers you time yourself and you also check your own papers so it just gives you a glance of where you stand now talking about paper 3 the practical practical is your own marks i just thought like that because you know like um, i i was lucky enough to have some really good teachers at my school who managed to give us a paper practice of a practical every week during my two terms which i studied for the physics now doing a practical every week made me so confident about paper three that i literally did not even go through past papers for paper three but 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 here's the twist most of the people think that paper 3 is easy and they just enter the and enter the examination hall but the thing about paper 3 is again success is in the details there are a lot of details in paper 3 the way you draw your graphs and the negative signs which you need to put there are a lot of small small details at every stage of paper 3 which you really need to know and the thing about paper 3 is they follow a very particular pattern they follow the same pattern in all those past papers and it was the same way even when i wrote my paper 3 so you just need to analyze what kind of pattern they follow and you'll be fine with paper 3 now talking about my own experience so i live in zambia which is a small country in africa and um, the british council here doesn't have its own laboratory so it's actually in uh, allied with uh, the university of zambia which has the laboratories and people say that the university of zambia is does not have really good laboratories and with all the equipments so <laughs> in my cambridge exam my paper three of physics they ran out of crocodile clips it was an electricity experiment, some potentiometer thing, and they ran out of crocodile clips. So, and the, the technician even uh, made an announcement that he doesn't have crocodile clips, so the people who don't have them right now will not be provided with, uh, with the crocodile clips anymore because they are limited. And some of my friends had two crocodile clips which they needed, but I, on the other hand, didn't have any. So then I called the technician and uh, asked him, like, I want the crocodile clips. And he, he actually got angry on me, saying that he just made an announcement right now, saying, uh, telling us about that they, they have a shortage of crocodile clips. And I was, on, on the other hand, I was asking for more crocodile clips. <laughs> you know what happened? And listen to this carefully. He literally walked away. But I called the British Council representative and the technician again and ask them for both of their names and uh, their details and I told them that I would be writing a letter to the British Council and the Cambridge Examination Board about this shortage of equipments at the laboratory during my final exams. If you just use this, I, I, you know what, I, like actually my principal told me to scare them by saying this if anything wrong goes on in, in the laboratories. I just did that. I just told them that I would be writing a letter to the British Council with all your, your details, meaning the technicians and the representative details. And two minutes and the technician comes with two crocodile clips to me. And okay, crocodile clips are small, like it doesn't, uh, the reading which you find on your ammeter, on your voltmeter during the examination does matter if you just hold the wire like that. Like he was telling me to just hold the wire where you want to and take the readings. I'm like, this is a final exam, I can't do that. That's why I started arguing with me and the people in the hall were even laughing. I'm like, okay guys, I don't care about it. These are my final exams and I need all the equipments to do them. If you don't want it, then it's, it's fine. Like, okay, so this is just my tip that if anything wrong happens, you don't have any, you have a shortage of equipments. They have a shortage of, uh, of equipments and they're not able to provide you with all the equipments. Maybe in biology, physics, chemistry, whatever practically you're, you're doing. Just tell the technicians that you want all of their details and um, you want to write a letter to the British Council. This actually scares them because at most of the centers of British Council across the world, the British Council itself doesn't have a lab. So it's in allied with other universities or other schools to set up a lab, you know, to hire the lab from them. 
So these technicians of those universities are not as serious as the British Council guys and the Cambridge examination guys. So it's just a tip. You can you can use this. Like don't be scared of using it. Don't be scared of asking him for whatever whatever. Just ask, and you you'll get it. Like it it's it's a serious matter. Just imagine if you get some wrong readings and you put that in the final exams and your pass just your paper three marks go down. You lose a A grade. You will lose a A grade. So it's just a tip. And another tip I would like to give you for paper two is remember all the formulas. Do not ever rely on the formula sheet which you get or on the constant sheets which you get. Remember all the constants and remember all the formulas by heart. And you know how to do that. Here is my list of formulas. They are in my bathroom, they are on my wall, they are everywhere. And this has actually helped me to just glance through them whenever I walk through the walls or whatever. It's, it's so easy to remember them and to be able to implement them. Okay guys, that's all for the physics video. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And do subscribe to my channel because I'm going to make frequent videos now about my AS level and my A level preparation techniques. And I'm also preparing for my university in, uh, in UK, USA, Canada or Australia. I'm applying to universities in these four countries so I'm going to make videos about um, you know like the application process and everything some of the videos for American universities are already there so do check them out and I'm also writing the SAT and the SAT subject tests in these three subjects biology physics and math 2 so I'll be making videos about how to prepare for these three also anyways all the best for your preparations for physics and don't forget to subscribe to my channel